Hello everybody. Today we are going to uh, learn how to convolve two signals in continuous time domain. So the lecture is on convolution integral. So let us start with what exactly is convolution. So given any system an LTI system which is characterized by its impulse response h of t and for any arbitrary input x of t we can determine the output of a system y of t using convolution which can be expressed as y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t so here the convolution operator is in indicated by this particular symbol called the asterisk symbol which we call it as so this in, uh, indicates that we are convolving two signals where x of t is any arbitrary input and h of t is the impulse response so convolution is basically used in system analysis where we can determine the output of a system y of t given the input and the impulse response of the given signal Im impulse response of the given system so this particular uh, uh, thing we are going to talk about we have we have we can also discuss the same thing in discrete time domain as well but today's lecture is basically focused on computing the uh, y of t in when we are uh, having x of t and h of t in continuous time so mathematically we describe y of t we can write the expression for convolution as y of t is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau. Now where we call this tau as a dummy variable x of tau h of t minus tau d tau. So we see in this uh, equation A there are four important operations which have to be carried out. The first operation is that we are folding the given signal that is minus tau you can see that we are folding the given signal after folding the second important thing is that we have to shift the given signal that is h of t minus tau has to be computed we have to shift the signal by t units that is the folded signal has to be shifted by t units you can observe from this equation after shifting the shifted signal has to be multiplied with x of t minus tau so we are having the multiplication operation after the multiplication then the last step is integration what has to be carried out so these are the four operations which are primarily involved in computing y of t okay so from this definition let us go ahead by taking a small example where we are computing the convolution of a unit step with a unit step so both the signals are in continuous time domain we are talking about continuous time domain signals a unit step convolved with unit step so this is our first example which we are going to look into so coming starting with the definition what we had discussed in the in the earlier slide so let us go back and we can define it for uh, this example as y of t is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity our x and h are both unit steps so we write it as u of tau u of t minus tau d tau so we have replaced with the respective variables u of tau u of t minus tau d tau so this is as per the definition of convolution integral so once done now we are going to solve this by uh, sketching the graphs and computing uh, y of t so how do we go about doing it we see the steps which are listed here the first thing from the definition requires sketching of u of tau so u of tau is nothing but the unit step signal instead of t we have a dummy variable called tau and u of t is equal to 1 for all values of t greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for t less than 0 it's the same thing just that t is replaced by tau so we have it here we have all uh, we have the first graph where we have sketched u of tau with respect to tau and of amplitude 1 so this is the first graph that is figure a the second part requires computing u of minus tau the second 
expression the second term in in, in our uh, integral expression requires u of t minus tau so we are going to achieve it by first uh, sketching u of minus tau so minus tau is first sketched here so minus tau is nothing but time reversal or folded signal what we are actually going to sketch so you see that from u of tau that is the first graph we are computing u of minus tau we have flipped this signal over the vertical axis so this is our vertical axis and we have flipped the signal over the vertical axis so it is one for all values of t less than or equal to zero and zero for all values of uh, t greater than zero so this is how we have t u of minus tau in this expression in uh, in this uh, graph so once we have folded the signal the uh, second term in the integral requires u of t minus tau so we have to uh, accomplish this uh, uh, task of getting u of t minus tau so how do we go about doing this so this u of t minus tau we are going to do it by considering two cases where this t is uh, we, we are going to bother about this t by taking up two cases where this t can be a negative that is t less than zero or t can be greater than or equal to zero so let us see how we can tackle this uh, by taking a value case one t is less than zero so we will assume that t is some value which is less than zero so sketching this graph we are going to sketch this on the folded signal that is on this signal that is u of t my u of minus tau on the folded signal or the flipped signal let us see how we can sketch u of t minus tau or where the t is some value which is less than zero so some value which is less than zero you see that we have this value which is less than zero it can be anything which is less than zero so we have moved it moved more more the uh, u of minus tau so to some value which is less than zero so we have got this so this is some value of t which is less than zero and that is our graph c figure c now later on after we have computed u of t minus tau now what we have to do is we have to multiply the expression uh, y of t had the product that is u of tau into u of t minus tau so in figure d we have sketched both of them for better understand understanding we have u of tau and we also have u of t minus tau which are sketched both uh, hand in hand so we have u of tau and u of t minus tau both together now what about the product which we are bothered about the product here u of tau and u of t minus tau because you see that u of tau is one for all values of t greater than or equal to zero and u of uh, uh, t minus tau exists for all values of t less than this uh, exists for all values less than t less than t so the product is actually zero here so that is the reason less than t it is one so the product here is actually zero so u of tau into u of t minus tau becomes zero the product is doesn't exist so that is why from this graph it's very evident that the product is not existing so that we have u of tau into u of t minus tau as zero so this is for the first case where we have t less than zero now the second is for t greater than zero so so we, we can uh, get back to this where uh, uh, we have y of t is equal to let us get back to the integral minus infinity to plus infinity u of tau into u of t minus tau where this product was zero so our integral becomes zero so the our y of t is actually zero so it, for t less than zero we got zero now the second case is for t greater than or equal to zero so for t greater than or equal to zero we will have to shift that u of minus tau to the right side where we have to compute uh, u of t minus tau so we have moved u of minus tau from the earlier graph uh, to um, uh, the right side that is for all values of t greater than or equal to zero so this is a graph which we you can actually see so this is what we have u of t minus tau which we uh, have here now uh, uh, let us just compute the next step that is finding out the product u of tau and u of t minus tau so if we work on the product where we have sketched both the graphs like in our earlier case 
we have both the uh, graphs on the same on uh, both both the signals on the same graph so we have u of u of tau that is it's for one for all values of t greater than or equal to zero and u of t minus tau which exists for all values of t which is one for all values of uh, uh, t uh, less than t less than t it is for all values of the, for the, for these values greater than t it is not existing greater than t it is zero so where does the product actually exist the product both of them are of amplitude one so the product actually exists between zero to t so you can see that that has been shaded where the product actually exists so we have the signal that is the product existing between zero to t that time axis and, and it is of amplitude one so since both the signals are of amplitude one the amplitude one into one is one so we have one as the amplitude here now let us work out on the integral y of t is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity u of tau u of t minus tau d tau for case two now the signal is of amplitude one yes so we have the one here and the limits now are changed to zero to t now the limits are changed it's not no more from minus infinity to plus infinity because the signal exists only between zero to t so our limits are from zero to t amplitude one one d tau so on integration we get it as t so this is for the second case that is for t greater than or equal to zero now consolidating both the cases we can write u of t convolved with u of t so we have taken care of all the cases one that is for t less than zero and for t greater than or equal to zero so if we consolidate it we will get y of t is equal to zero for t less than zero and t for t greater than or equal to zero let us try to sketch this graph y of t so y of t when we sketch it it will look t is nothing but a ramp signal t is a ramp the of slope one so it's a unit ramp so it's a unit ramp for all values of t greater than or equal to zero and you see it is uh, uh, zero for all values of t less than zero so in simple words we can write an expression as t into u of t this is what we get as y of t is equal to t uh, for u of t convert with u of t is t into u of t so this is how we can find the convolution of two continuous time signals you can try practicing an exponential signal convolved with an exponential signal an exponential convolved with a unit step signal so the same cases you can expect because both are infinite duration signals we can you you can just practice these questions to get a better understanding of what we have discussed thank you